Welcome to the 2019 National Invitation Tournament. First round action tonight inside Little John Coliseum. It's Clemson and Wright State. With Corey Alexander, Kevin Fitzgerald with you. Here is this quadrant of the NIT bracket. Clemson and Wright State, the two against seven matchup. Indiana, the top seed, and the winner of our game tonight faces either Furman or Wichita State. That game tomorrow at 7 Eastern time. So Clemson, 19 and 13, a two seed, one of the first few teams left out of the NCAA tournament. Regardless, it's time to refocus as they are now in their third straight postseason tournament. Away we go. Well, being in a third straight postseason really is no consolation for the Clemson Tigers who participated in the Sweet 16. And you see already what has been an issue for Clemson all season long. Elijah Thomas trying to get post position, gets an offensive foul. And it's way too early for that to happen. As you see, Thomas just trying to maneuver his way up the lane. But basically going outside of his cylinder, picking up the offensive foul. And that was Parker Ernsthausen who was there battling. Keep an eye on number no, 11, okay. that's that starting lineup. Well, you see number 11 gets that exact same foul, and that's what I was looking at to make sure the officials were going to be consistent. And you see Loudon Love coming up with this same offensive foul. So both these bigs picking up one early, and both these guys, of course, very important members to each team. So well done by Raymond Steins, Chuck Jones, Tommy Morrissey, our officiating crew tonight. And the first basket is down for Clemson. Marquise Reed, of course, somewhat of a throwback. His ability to score in the mid-range reminds him back, reminds me of a time much long ago when I actually played basketball in the mid-range matter. <laughs> and Marquise Reed closing in on 2,000 career points. If he's able to keep his college career going for a few more games, well, he's now 27 points away. He's the two-time All-ACC selection with the basketball, number two in white. Now, no Shelton Mitchell for Clemson tonight, so Reed going to take on more responsibilities. Came into the game 29 points away from 2,000, and again, I've seen him score 31 on this floor against Boston College, so it's not as though he can't get it tonight. And Mitchell, another 1,000-point score. What does Clemson lose with him inactive? Today? Well, they lose their floor general, I mean, to start with. And, of course, another very good defender, but a fifth-year senior, a graduate player, of course. So the veteran leadership from Shelton Mitchell, who's been in the backcourt with Marquise Reed consistently over the past three years. You were talking with the staff earlier. Knee discomfort for Mitchell. And there is the big fella, Elijah Thomas, another senior. And for, you know, Clemson to move on, if this... Amir Sims creates the turnover. Clyde Trapp with his first look. And yeah, that's loud in love. He leads this team in rebounding, one of the best in the Horizon League as well. I've been looking forward to this matchup with Love and Elijah Thomas. There are very few guys that can make Elijah Thomas look small, but Love is one of those. He is a big guy down in the post. Those two, by my count, a little more than a quarter ton. <laughs> nice jumper from the top of the key. And Mark Hughes has Wright State out of the board. When you talk about the seniors, of course, Clemson alongside Mitchell Thomas, David Scarra, they have a number of seniors in their lineup, but same similar for Wright State with four seniors on their roster. And, of course, that's what the NIT is very important for. As you look at Clemson, the 9-9 nine nine ACC record, winning eight of the last 12 regular season games, you know, but losing to NC State on that one-point differential in the, in the ACC tournament was uh, – Detrimental for the Tigers, of which many around the ACC, including myself, thought was a play-in game. Come to find out it was not a play-in game because neither of the teams get into the NCAA tournament. NC State also a two-seed in the NIT. There's Reed. Burrows in for two. And that's the thing about Marquise Reed. He will stay in attack mode the entire game, but also the leading assist man for the Tigers this year. So became much more of a playmaker during his last season.
Bill Wampler's first try, no. Now Reed also scores more than 19 points per game. That's top three in the ACC. Reed, there's the mid-range game. But that's the thing, you know, you hear all the analytics people talking about how the mid-range shot is a bad shot. I think any shot that goes in is a good shot, and Marquise Reed knows how to get to a sweet spot and put points on the board. You referenced your time playing for Virginia back in the day. The three-point line wasn't where it is during this tournament either. Some rule changes, we'll get into that later on in the show. But Clemson with a six-point lead in the early minutes. This is round one of the NIT. And John Newman has come ready to play not just one hand, but the two-hand volleyball spike. Round one of the NIT inside Little John Coliseum, the second seeded Clemson Tigers with the six point advantage with the former Virginia Cavaliers captain Corey Alexander, Kevin Fitzgerald with you. So Clemson a two seed. They're one of those first few teams left out of the NCAA tournament field. We were talking to Brown, Brownell, the head coach. How would they respond? And well, they responded nicely out of the gates. Marquise Reed has looked sharp. Well, the first game in the NIT, of course, is going to be extremely difficult because you have that letdown of not playing in the NCAA tournament until you realize that you're playing for something. Marquise Reed is playing for something, and with him at the leadership role for this team, I believe the Tigers are in good hands. Also with David Starr and Elijah Thomas, Shelton Mitchell missing in this game because of knee soreness. But when you look at Reed's numbers, 19.3, 5.7 rebounds, which is great for a guard, the 3.1 assists, but the 2.2 steals per game separates him. Only one of two players in Division I averaging those numbers. He went for 31 earlier this season in a game, and as you said, with no Shelton Mitchell, Reed's impact, you expect, will grow even further tonight. Loves that 15-footer, hit one earlier. That's his first miss. He started three of three from the field. Deep try off the mark for Cole Gentry. So Brad Brownell and the Tigers, they draw right state. The regular season champions out of the Horizon League. And by the way, this is where Brad Brownell used to coach. There's a three from the top of the key, and Clyde Trapp, he starts for Mitchell with his first base. And Clyde Trapp has really improved his shooting in comparison to his freshman year. Had a strong season this season coming off the bench as six man. Actually started a couple games, one for David Scar when he was out injured. So Clyde Trapp really become a, became an important member for team this year and a reliable substitute. There's Scara, and the run is now 9-0 for Clemson. You know, and Kevin, one of the things that you have to consider as well, this Wright State team, many of these guys played in the NCAA tournament a year ago as well. So they had the disappointment of not playing in the NCAA tournament this year because, of course, they were expecting to get back after winning the Horizon League co-championship this year, splitting with Northern Kentucky but then losing to Northern Kentucky in the championship game. And so right now, you know, both teams trying to figure out, you know, do they have a purpose in being here and how important is it for each team to win this game? There's John Newman the third with another three. And a timeout taken by Wright State. 12-0 Clemson run. The experimental rules this year for the National Invitation Tournament, if you've noticed already, we have a deeper three-point line. It's been extended back 20 inches. That's FIBA regulation, a wider lane as well. It's, it's widened by four feet. Now, that is similar to the NBA dimensions. And Corey Alexander, I know you don't have many opinions on these experimental rules at all. Absolutely not. Me be opinionated? <laughs> I mean, come on. Think, think about that. But the one rule that is a bit confusing for me is actually in last year of course the NIT played the experimental rules of going to the quarters well this year they won't play quarters but they will reset the fouls every 10 minutes so for the 10 minutes at the 10 minute mark in the first half they will reset the fouls to zero once again but no one and one so everything up to five after five fouls will be in what we used to call the NBA a double bonus was basically two free throws but no one and ones but the fact that it resets 
at the 10-minute mark is really the interesting part. There's a steal, and Wampler's at the line at a moment. Well, did you like the quarter system last year? I honestly do like the quarter system, um, and I think the reason being is because what I think people are looking for is a more universal game. And when you see the FIBA line now being instituted here for experimental, experimental rules, I think that's something that will come to college basketball soon. The women's game has gone to the quarter system, but I like the quarter, the quarter system much more if you want to reset the foul. I don't really think it makes sense to do it just at the 10-minute mark of the first and second half without anyone really knowing because, of course, if a foul is called, now you've got to go back looking at the clock say, okay, is this a two-shot foul or did we already set it back? What happens at 10-0-0 at on the clock? 10-0-1, we know what happens, but with 10, exactly 10 minutes left on the clock, if the foul occurs then, we don't know what happens at that point. So. That one is a bit confusing for me, um, and again, they'll figure it out, but I can't see that being a rule that would ever be instituted in the college basketball, and in that case, what's the point of doing it now? And like you said, those fouls that you see at the bottom of your screen at that 10-minute mark, they will. They'll just disappear. They'll wipe out. Well, i tell you what won't wipe out. Clemson's three-point shooting. You can't do anything with that right now. And I'm sure that Brad Brownell is happy to see his team get off to such a great shooting start. But more importantly, playing as though this game matters and they want to be here. So there's the first three for Wright State. That shrinks the deficit back down to 10. You saw just a second ago, three of four from D for the Tigers. It's been a little bit of their bugaboo this year, three-point shooting. But a hot start without Shelton Mitchell. The fifth year senior out with an injury. So in his place, Clyde Trapp. He lost it, stays here though. You were alluding to this a moment ago. Both of these teams, including Wright State, they were in the NCAA tournament a year ago. So for both coaches, and in this case, Scott Nagy, the head coach at Wright State, almost have to stoke that flame a bit. Get everyone on the same page for this tournament. And Wright State, the regular season champions in the Horizon League. As you pointed out before, lost to Northern Kentucky in the tournament championship game. And lost them out on that a chance to head back to the NCAA tournament. Ten-point lead for the Tigers. First round of the NIT. Rewind 12 years when current Clemson Tigers head coach Brad Brownell was leading Wright State into the NCAA tournament. Deshaun Wood was the star that season for the Raiders and a 2007 season ended with the Horizon League Championship. Brownell, who's been at Clemson now for the last nine seasons, cutting down the net. That was one of three NCAA tournament trips in program history for Wright State. And that was actually the first year for Brad Brownell, who took over for our own Paul Biancardi that season. And Brad Brownell also took the Clemson Tigers to the NCAA tournament his first year with the Tigers. So, And they, of course, a Sweet 16 team a year ago with two trips to the NCAA tournament for Clemson for Brad Brownell. And honestly, for this program, a disappointing season for not getting there this year, especially after the success of what they had last year. And when you couple that with the fact that you have the four returning seniors in the starting lineup in the experience, a tough start, a one and five start for the Tigers this year, played very well down the stretch. You know, we talked about winning eight of their last 12 regular season games, but that tough start really hurt Clemson coming out of the gate. Well, Brownell's team had to play Duke, Syracuse, Florida State all on the road, and then Virginia as well. Four out of their first five in league play. My goodness. And that's a sore spot for Brad Brownell. I'll be honest with you. I've talked with Brad many times about that. That's a sore spot because, of course, it's one thing to do it, and it seems to be an every year deal for Clemson. But when you get off to a start, when you have to play against those teams, as you see another three made for Skylar Potter, and now Wright State starting to shoot the basketball extremely well, getting back into it, only trailing by five after a very hot start from the Clemson Tigers. Well, this certainly is a start that Scott Nagy likes to see. Another triple, this time it's Scara again. And that breaks an 8-0 run from Wright State, so a big three from Scara right there answering. With the... 
with the Raiders have come out here and have gotten themselves comfortable on Clemson's home floor. Allen Vest on the drive. Shot blocked. And eventually it's Bill Wampler to clean it up. He now has six. There's Tyson with the block. Wright State, though, back within six. And Wampler can score in a hurry. The second leading scorer for Wright State coming off the bench was actually a member of the second team all Horizon League team this year, but a first team Horizon League all tournament performer. And he influences the shot there. Stays with Clemson. So right at 10 minutes, the fouls reset. We go back to zero. Fortunately, no foul called at this point. And that really was my concern. What happens at exactly 10 minutes? Does it reset immediately at 10, or is it 9.59 where it goes back? See, that's what you got to have answers for me for, Kev. Come on now. You were waiting on pins and needles. By the way, if you if you look closely at the top corner of your screen, the shot clock is also reset to 20 on an offensive rebound of the NIT. The shot clock reset to 20 and not 30. In talking with official Ramey Science before the game, he said he actually likes that rule. Not a huge fan of, of the fouls resetting, but <laughs> because, of course, for officials who are used to basically being able to keep a count, look up at the scoreboard and say, okay, they know it's a one-and-one. One. Well, the one-and-one one is gone from the, for the NIT, so that won't be something we deal with. But at the same time, knowing whether teams are going to the free throw line or if they're just taking the ball outside of the fouls that aren't shooting fouls. I think our shot clock operator tonight, Robert Bradley, deserves a raise, Absolutely. at least for tonight's game. Absolutely. First round of the NIT, Clemson a two seed. He's in this tournament two years ago, lost in the first round. This NIT appearance, of course, following a Sweet 16 appearance in the NCAA tournament last year. On the verge of another 20-win season. This now, is Thomas back to the line. Now, the fact that Clemson is a two seed and that NC State is a two seed means as though they were not in the first four out of the NCAA tournament, correct? UNC Greensboro, Indiana, TCU, Alabama, the top seeds in this tournament. Okay. So I'm trying to decide if this is the time for me to get on my soapbox or should I wait? <laughs> so for the NCAA, and they get rid of the RPI, and they say this is the new NCAA net ranking system that we're going to use. If you look at the top, North Carolina State and Clemson, two ACC teams, are 33 and 35th in the NCAA. Ranking. Belmont, Temple, Arizona State, St. John's, all well behind these two teams, got into the NCAA tournament. I have a problem with this, a major problem with this, because if it is your rankings, do you remember at the beginning of the year when conference play started and the NCAA does this huge thing on college game day, releasing their net rankings? What's the point? If you don't use it, what's the point of having it? I, explain that to me, Kev. I, I need some explanation. Here. Well, at NC State and Clemson, they're actually the two highest rated net te or teams in the net rankings left out of the tournament field. Thank you. There's the senior from Dallas, Thomas again, and the lead back to nine. So if if we we go back to this conversation, and those two teams are left out with the NCAA's net ranking system, and of course the NCAA felt it was necessary to get rid of RPI and come with their own net ranking system. Uh oh, this is what there's Potter. Oh, and count the basket. Yeah, I like, the, of course, the great defensive play by Potter getting out into the lane. But I can tell you right now, he is a highlight reel performer. And I was excited to see if he was going to take off. Regardless, the layup still counts for two. And Wright State within four. So make sure you catch every moment of the 2019 National Invitation Tournament on the ESPN family of networks. For more information, also visit NCAA.com. It's your home for all 90 
NCAA championships. Three wins in this tournament gets you to New York City, the semifinals, and the final, of course, at the Mecca, Madison Square Garden. Now, Clemson, five years ago in the NIT, made it to the semis in New York City back in 2007 to the finals as well. So they have ventured to New York City a couple times. But, Corey, you were talking about this earlier. For both of these teams in the NCAA tournament a year ago, it's you kind of have to stoke that flame, that, that competitive flame, to get things going, to try to make that run to New York. You really do. And I went through this as a player my freshman year at the University of Virginia, or what we like to refer to as first year. Uh, we were a team that went 500 in the ACC, which was a great conference that year as well. And we were left out of the NCAA tournament. And so we were a bubble team, and there was a tremendous disappointment in not getting into the tournament. But Bryant Stiff and Anthony Oliver, our two senior leaders on that team, were very, you know, insensitive on us going to the NIT. And I'll, I'll be completely honest. I didn't want to play in NIT. I didn't come to Virginia to play in NIT. I came to play in the NCAA tournament, watched the NCAA tournament my whole life. But that first game, it took a lot to get motivated to play. After that first game, it was basically we're playing basketball again. Let's go. You know, let's if we're going to be here, we might as well win this thing. And we actually ended up winning it. And now as I look back on it, it was one of the greatest experiences that I had as a college player. Played in the NCAA tournament, you know, every year after that. But that NIT team was special. And it's something that, I mean, we still have a group text today where, you know, the members of that team, we're constantly in touch with each other talking about it. And that really helped us and really helped us the following year at the University of Virginia. And you see the, the, the low hair look, not no, but low hair look. Yeah, why? I actually shaved myself, Jason Williford, who's now uh, assistant coach University of Virginia, Cornell Parker, Ted Jeffries, my teammates and I. We shaved our heads for the NIT when we played the first game at Villanova. Now, I'll tell you what was not so intelligent on my part. I'd never had a bald head before, so I wanted it to be shiny on TV, and I put baby oil on my head. Baby oil is not the easiest thing to get off your hands once you apply it, and um, it definitely had calls for about three of my turnovers in that game against Villanova. <laughs> now, the other three to four that I had, and that's on me, but I'm playing the baby oil for the first few. Yeah, only three. That's pretty impressive, actually. No, only three with baby oil. The other three <laughs> to four were on me, so that's a six or seven turnover game. And right now, after you know what we've seen and some turnovers from Clemson, Bryce State with an opportunity to take a lead after Clemson got off to such a hot start. Making the trip from Dayton, Ohio, Wright State on an eight-nothing run. Looking for loud and love, and that one's picked off. And Malachi Smith just late. Trying to get that ball inside to Love. He was open early, but waiting to try to get it to him definitely was costly in the turnover. Clemson un unable to take advantage of it. Clemson playing without Shelton Mitchell. He's out with some knee discomfort. And that's a fifth-year senior in the backcourt and a 1,000-point score. Right State shooting close to 50% from the field on this end. Another pass tipped. It's going to stay here. Well, the way Wright State has done it is really from the bench. That's where they've gotten tremendous production to this point. How about Potter with nine points off the bench? Freshman from Bowling Green, Kentucky. And Potter actually was freshman of the week during the first season. This year, we awarded that on November 13th. And so when you when you get winning a war like that in season one of, you know, I mean, I'm sorry, in week one of the season, you're thinking, well, this young guy's going to get off to a great start. But it was actually Malachi Smith, the freshman, who was able to make the all-freshman team this year in the Horizon League. How about Reed with that finish? And the thing with Marquise Reed, he never looks like he's going full speed, but he's able to get to his spots very crafty around the basket. Reed, the fifth-year senior from Maryland, now into double figures for the 12th straight game. And he's got the ball. Newman. Now 
misses Wampler. And he hits another three. And the difference in the three-point line doesn't bother Wampler at all. His ability to stretch the floor has tied the basketball game for Wright State. Nine points for Wampler. He's the redshirt junior off the bench, scores 15 points tonight. And it's Clemson that's gone cold, just one of its last seven from the field. Well, Clemson got off to a great start shooting the three, but one, I believe they may have fallen in love with the three-pointer, not attacking the basket as much, and definitely not getting the ball inside, utilizing Elijah Thomas. This is Cole Gentry. Wright State using the three ball to get back in this game. And Bill Wampler not needing much space. Step back behind the three-point line, the extended line, to tie the game. Another fantastic NBA Wednesday doubleheader. It starts in Philadelphia, Boston, and Philly at 7 Eastern time. Then we head off to Oklahoma City. Toronto and OKC. And I, I want to build this as a Kawhi Leonard and Russell Westbrook matchup, but lest we forget about Jeremy Lin. He torched my Knicks the other night went for 20. Or be a good one. Or forgetting about the MVP candidate, Paul George, who's playing great basketball for Oklahoma City this year. And OKC, one of my favorites to advance. In the playoffs this year, I'm not sure if they can beat Golden State yet, but I really like what they're doing on the defensive end of the floor. You've got your Nuggets there tied with no, Golden no, no, no. State. No, 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 not my Nuggets. No, 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 no. If you're ever going to say my NBA team, you go Spurs. Nuggets <laughs> at the bottom of that list. We're not claiming the Nuggets. Uh, well, it was a nice win, by the way, for San Antonio the other night over Golden State. Yeah, I'll take that one. You can say my Spurs, but you can't say my Nuggets. Give me credit for the save there, I, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, we'll take that one. <laughs> Look at that guy right there. No gray hair. Who's that? I haven't seen him in a long time. I look in the mirror, I don't see him anymore. <laughs> they didn't get you the, uh, the, the shaved head photo from freshman year. <laughs> no, nah, second year I didn't do that. Actually, that's the last time I've ever shaved my head. <laughs> I was a one and done as a freshman. Let's just say that. <laughs> When it comes to head shaving, one and done. They've given a new definition to one and done. And Wright State taking a lead now here on Clemson's home floor. And, you know, interesting to see how does Clemson respond to some adversity in this game. The Raiders definitely are playing with much more energy, and it's really been the bench. You know, a 20-3 to advantage points off the bench right now when we talk about Shelton Mitchell not being involved in this game. With the knee soreness, so therefore Clyde Trapp comes into the starting lineup. So you don't have much firepower on the bench. John Newman, who's getting a little bit of a lecture from Brad Brownell on the sideline right now. But you don't have a lot of bench production when you consider that Trapp is now in the starting lineup. Corey, the Tigers led by 14 earlier. That, that official is checking right now. That basketball was actually blocked. Give Hughes credit for getting over Marquise Reed with the pull-up. But Mark Hughes doing a great job recovering and blocking that shot. Now only three seconds remaining on the shot clock. Question is, does, Cle does Clemson know? Reed, foul. And the answer is yes, they do know, and they run action to be able to get an easy look. For Marquise Reed under the basket, unable to finish, but does get fouled. And this really, you have to look at Cole Gentry on that one. At that point, knowing there's three seconds on the shot clock, Gentry has to take away everything underneath the basket, force Clemson to throw the basketball away from it. To the worst case scenario is you get a, a long contested jump shot. And Marquise Reed, who rarely ever misses free throws, missing the first one at the line. Yeah, he leads the ACC. It is rare to see a miss. And it's even more rare to see two misses, but two back-to-back. -back. But that's actually what you saw in their loss to NC State on the buzzer beater. Reed, and you talked about his free throw prowess, missing four straight to give Braxton Beverly an opportunity to knock down that 
buzzer beating three point winner, game winner, in a game that really cost Clemson in the long run. Yeah, back on January 26th, Mr. Four misses in the final minute. It's an astonishing finish. How about the up and under and Mark Hughes, the senior from Youngstown, Ohio. Gives the Raiders a four point lead. And really a poised play by Hughes right there, watching two Clemson defenders run out away from him, leaving him wide open for the reverse layup, and Wright State operating on all cylinders right now. So the first four of the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship, it continues tomorrow on True TV. That begins at 6.30 Eastern time. For more information, visit NCAA.com. One first four game ongoing right now. It's Fairley Dickinson and Prairie View A&M. Later tonight, Temple and Belmont. Oh boy, got it. Not watching that Take game. It, you're not watching that game. Not watching that game tonight. Clemson and NC State should be playing in that game. There's Reed, and that snaps the 7-0 right State run. So if you were to maneuver some things right on that final 11 line and, and those first four teams, the last four, I should say, into the tournament. Who do you take out in place of Clemson and, and NC State? I take out Belmont first. Then I take out St. John's. And if I need to take out Temple, I take Temple out. And the reason being, St. John's, in my opinion, of course, you know, did not have a strong year in the Big East, and the Big East was down this year. A normal Big East conference is going to get six teams into the tournament. They got four in with St. John's being borderline. Belmont, if you tell me that their best wins were two wins over Lipscomb, who Clemson beat, that part I can't really get involved too much in, especially when you consider that playing in a conference that's nowhere near as difficult to get wins as is for Clemson. And so those two teams I'm probably going to take away first. Belmont... St. John's, and then of course, you know, when I look at Temple, you know, honestly, Temple, Fran Dunphy's last year, I give that one. You know, from a sentimental standpoint, for what he's meant to college basketball, I give that one. But in my opinion, Belmont, St. John's, I'm taking those two out first. And NC State and Clemson, yeah, the two highest ranked teams in the net well, left out of the tournament. And, and, and when you look at Belmont, a net 47, you know, maybe then it's Arizona State who comes out. But Arizona State does have the great win over Kansas, which was Kansas was number one team in the country at the time. Come to find out, Kansas isn't as good as we all thought they were and have a tough year. So maybe it's Arizona State that comes out in a Pac-12 that's down again, just I mean down this year, just like we're talking about with the Big East. Will you be competing with Joe Lunardi next year? I will not. <laughs> that's way too much work. Clemson maybe try to take a lead or tie before the break. And there is Marquise Reed, the two-time All-ACC selection. Gentry. And nearly hit that one from 47. And after Clemson led by as many as 14, lost the lead, they tie it up. We'll give Wright State credit for coming on the road and wanting to win. That's a big key in the NIT. You got to want to win. Both these teams right now look like they do. Clemson hosting Wright State in round one of the National Invitation Tournament today inside Little John Coliseum. The Tigers led by as many as 14, but we're tied at half with Corey Alexander, Kevin Fitzgerald with you. So the Raiders, they make the trip from Dayton, Ohio. It's nice when you have an all-conference performer coming off the bench, and Wright State has one of those, and Bill Wampler. And Wampler, of course, was an all-tournament selection in the Horizon League you know, just last week, so he's a young man that understands how to score and how to help his team. And he did just that coming off the bench. Wampler already nine points in this game. His ability to take the ball to the basket and finish strongly only added to his ability to shoot the three ball. So he was successful in the first half. And then Skyler Potter coming in, knocking down the three and getting out in transition as well, using the athleticism. Disappointed I didn't get to see him dunk this one, but the three-point play still added up. And on the other side for the Clemson Tigers, Marquise Reed getting to the mid-range. 14 first half points for Reed as he's able to score tackling the basket and that mid-range shot is allowing him to have success 
versus Wright State. And Marquise Reed has approached this game as he wants his career to continue in a Clemson uniform, but he's going to have to get some of his teammates to come along with him with that level of energy and effort. Both teams shot fairly well from the field. One teammate not with Marquise Reed and company tonight is Shelton Mitchell out today with a knee injury, and that's the 1,000-point score in the backcourt along with Reed. We mentioned Marquise Reed coming into the game 29 points away from scoring 2,000 points. And on pace right now to get it very close <laughs> to coming up with that 29. Here in this game, 14 at the half, but Elijah Thomas with a nice move and finish in the post to start the second half, similar to how we started the first half of this game. Does Clemson need to feed Thomas in the post a bit more? Absolutely. I mean, because he has an advantage. And, and you know, when you look at he and Love beside each other, Love is a bigger than Elijah Thomas, but Elijah Thomas more skilled around the basket and can be very effective when he gets his opportunities in the post. And is a very good passer, so not a selfish player at all. Here's that matchup. And Love with the left hand off the window. And I should say also Wright State would be better served to get the ball in the hands of Love. Allow these two bigs to go at him a little bit and see which one of them get the better of that matchup. Love on the Horizon All-First team. He has eight points and a handful of rebounds. He leads Wright State in both categories. There's Thomas. He slams it down. You know, but one of the areas where Coach Nagy has gone to is he's actually not having love guarding Elijah Thomas. It's Ernsthausen who's basically taking on the challenge of having to defend Elijah Thomas. As Thomas gets over in that situation, he has to let that go. That's going to be the third foul on Elijah, Tom Elijah Thomas, which takes away his aggressiveness. But you see love, and Thomas does a great job of stopping the first move, but you see the skill of love on the block with the nice left hand and then Elijah Thomas on some get back on the other end of the floor, takes it out on the rim. This is Mark Hughes, 74% from the line. And if the redshirt sophomore from Geneva, Illinois looks like a football player, because he was, this is loud in love, by the way, as a senior at Geneva High School. Is Head coach Scott Nagy was telling us he was well over 300 pounds. He suffered a pretty brutal injury on the football field, converted entirely to basketball, and he followed Scott Nagy when he left Sandy uh, part at South Dakota State and took the head coaching job at Wright State three years ago. And, and of course, a very good move for him, and has been very successful on the basketball court. An opportunity to play in the NCAA tournament a year ago, and now you mentioned first team All Horizon League this year. There's Scarra, cleans up the boards. But Love is one of those guys you got to keep an eye on, of course, next year and hopefully, hopefully the year after as becoming one of those players that really has an impact at the mid-major level and the ability to dominate in the post. And if anybody knows about that, it would be Coach Nagy. He recruited one Mike Dom at South Dakota State who happens to put up over 3,000 points in his college career thus far, playing in the NIT, continuing to try to add to that tag. Mike Dobb at South Dakota State. They take on Texas. That's out of ESPN at 9 Eastern, so that's coming up later tonight. And there is the now two-time Horizon League Coach of the Year. He's won that honor, Scott Nagy has, the last two seasons. And his team has the one-point edge. You know, and one thing that, that Coach Nagy has done is basically now he's had some success at Wright State, but he has young players that are going to continue within his style of play. So, of course, they lose, you know, they lose four seniors this year, but they have a young core that really will continue on of guys that he has recruited that should help him continue to be very relevant in the Horizon League and see if they can actually represent the Horizon League and NCAA tournament a couple times over the next few years. How about Wampler? And Wampler, a junior, transferring in. This is his first year playing for Wright State, but he has another year, so look for him to be another one of those guys. He was a second-team All-Horizon League performer this season. 
I'm sure has to be a front runner for a Rising League Player of the Year, or at least first teamer in the preseason next year. This ties the largest lead for the Raiders. And you have to remember, Elijah Thomas picking up that third foul, now on the bench. And Wright State continuing to gain confidence on the offensive end of the floor. Backdoor cut, off the window, Skyler Potter, he's had a great first half. A little too strong. Green travel. Eighth Clemson turnover. Well, we talked about Bill Wampler in the first half. And getting the second half started off the right way. He was doing more of the damage going to the rim in the first half. But now showing off that three-point prowess. He knocks down his second three on the evening. And we'll revisit that, as you pointed out. No Elijah Thomas on the floor for Clemson. And where's that going? So now both teams with eight turnovers. And that stops the momentum for Wright State. Clemson ball down four next. Wright State leaning on the junior, Bill Wampler, today. And Bill Wampler coming off the bench and finding his way to the rim for success. 12 points for Wampler here thus far in this game. Knocking down the three as well. Wampler providing that scoring punch off the bench. A 23-3 advantage for Wright State in bench points. And you see the numbers from Bill Wampler. 12 points, 4 for 6 field goals already. And, you know, this is a young man who in his first game for Wright State after transferring from Drake had 26 points versus Western Carolina. Started the first 14 games but was inconsistent with his shooting. Went to the bench, and since he's been coming off the bench, has been playing much better, much more consistent in shooting the basketball, you know, which makes him a tremendous weapon to have coming in the game. Clemson needed an answer. And there's the freshman, John Newman, the third. Does that allow you to see the, the pace of the game, the floor a little bit better? You, you sit on the bench those first few minutes, get a sense of how the game is flowing? That may be the case for some people. I can tell you right now, I was horrible coming off the bench. If I didn't, it was a crapshoot. If I didn't start the game, you never knew what you were going to get. You know, Forrest Gump said it best, life is like a bunch of box of chocolates, and that's what it was like for me as a reserve. Now, as a starter, I was very consistent. But when I, I can tell you right now, when I didn't start the game and I checked in, I, I can imagine coaching me at that point and having no idea what you were going to get. Reed still looking for his first bucket in the second half. And Trapp actually passed up a layup, but didn't realize that Gentry defending him had fallen down. Clyde Trapp kicking it out for the three for Marquise Reed, but he gave up a wide open layup. How about the spin? And Potter is hacked at the rim. A foul is on Amir Sims. Boy, this freshman, Skyler Potter, has been impressive. Yeah, we've talked a lot about Wampler coming off the bench, but Potter has been just as efficient and just as aggressive attacking the rim. You know, reading about Potter, he talked about the fact that he was just a dunker and put a lot of time in the gym working on his shot and his ability to handle the basketball, becoming much more of a well-rounded basketball player, and you see that. But I can tell you right now, watching him earlier today in the shoot down, he's got some dunk contest material. <laughs> That's why I was so disappointed when he got out of the fast break. I stopped my sentence thinking we were going to see one of those highlight level dunks. Still time. Potter has the Raiders ahead by four again. You know, and one thing that we talked about a lot in this game in the first half was Clemson and did they get snubbed? Should they have been in the NCAA tournament? But one thing I will tell you, heartbreak, disappointment, whatever it may be, you have no case if you don't come out and win in the NIT. Because that's really what good teams do. They put adversity aside and go out to be successful. And right now, Wright State is doing that much more so than are the Clemson Tigers. Look who it is again, Billy Wampler. Well, Wampler doing a great job getting in legal guarding position. And you see David Scar extend that left forearm 
that's going to be an offensive foul. There's no argument there. You know when you extend it, Ramey Stein's right on top of the call, and you see that's an easy one. The winner of this game plays either Furman or Wichita State. That's the three against sixth matchup in this quadrant of the NIT. Underneath, and the shot was partially blocked. Love cleans it up with two more. He's now into double figures. Largest lead of the evening for Wright State. And that's a 20-point swing. You're talking about a Clemson team that was winning this game at one point by 14 points, and now Wright State up six, a 20-point swing in favor of the Raiders. Count the basket. Clyde Trapp can get it back to a three-point game. And they much needed basket by Clemson, who had four turnovers in the last three-plus three, three plus minutes in this game, but Trapp getting to the mid-range and knocking down the floater and also picking up the foul on Love. The opportunity for a three-point play. Second foul on Love, the only player with three personals. That is Elijah Thomas. I mean, that's an area where Clemson has struggled in this game at the free throw line. We talked about Marquise Reed missing two in a row. And that's rare for this Clemson team. Also rare is seeing them go to a zone. Brad Brownell, a diehard man-to-man -man coach. But right now, his team unsuccessful in defending in the man-to-man. -man. Wampler offline. Reed still hasn't scored this half. He is 14, and he's at the line. That is the third foul on Loud and Love. <laughs> and I love how Love, oh, wait a minute. I didn't think about doing that, Nicely but it works. <laughs> but Love just basically waved the officials off on that play as if it were not a foul. <laughs> but, you know, of course, you know, there is a, there is a leniency towards verticality, but there was no verticality on that one. He was all leaned in. To Marquise Reed on that possession. 6'9, 280 pound redshirt sophomore to the bench. Thomas stays on the floor for Clemson. He's the five in the middle. So a little press. We saw zone a second ago from Clemson. Two point game. It'll be interesting to see if Clemson stays in that zone. It looks as though they will. And a lot of that's oftentimes to protect Elijah Thomas, who we talked about is back on the floor with that foul trouble. But the part, hard problem is actually rebounding in a zone, which can be very difficult. Clemson forced it to come up with a defensive rebound in that possession. Read the kick. Scara. Got it for three. Tigers back ahead. Gentry left open, and the response, he splashes it. And that's the danger of playing the zone versus the Raiders. They have a number of guys that have already shown they can shoot the basketball. And right now, you've got five shooters in the lineup for Wright State, so got to be accountable for everyone on the floor. Third straight three, Marquise Reed. And it's That's a mix up. Yeah, mix up between Elijah Thomas and Potter. These two guys going to the floor. Going to be interesting. I'm sure the officials are going to look at this one while we're away. But right now, you're talking about Cole Gentry lining it up from three, knocking it down. And on the other end of the floor, Marquise Reed with a little get back. Elijah Thomas and Clemson with a slim one-point lead over Wright State. So just before our timeout a moment ago, Elijah Thomas and Raiders for uh, freshman Skyler Potter. Take a look at Tangled here. No fouls were assessed, but Corey. Is Potter actually hooking Elijah Thomas and bringing him to the ground? So that could be the hook and hold. But you also see Thomas with the elbow 
to the back of Potter once he falls down. So it's going to be interesting to see what the officials come away with here because that seems to be a classic hook and hold. And you get an opportunity as they get mixed up. You see Potter does a good job of trying to box out. But now the arm hook, hold, and pulls Thomas down. As Thomas goes down, he takes exception in the elbow to the back of the head. So going to be interesting to see what the officials come away with this. But as everyone walks back out to the court, Elijah Thomas going to the free throw line. It seems as though that is going to be the flagrant for the hook and hold. Not sure if there's going to be anything based upon the, the elbow. Now Raymond Steins is coming over to chat with us. He had just walked over to Wright State's huddle. And like you said, this appears it could very well be the hook and hold. It, it is the hook and hold. Um, so there's going to be the two free throws. There will be nothing for the elbow from Elijah Thomas. So fortunately for Clemson, because that's an area where it actually, honestly could have been a technical foul, but it was after the play and the hook and hold took precedence over anything that happened afterwards. So it's the second foul on Potter. Like you said, Clemson does get possession after the second free throw. And it was also after a three-point field goal made from Marquise Reed, so already a four-point possession and could be even more because Clemson gets the basketball back. And you're talking about Wright State. When they came to this end of the floor, actually had a lead off the Cole Gentry three-pointer. Reed took it back to a one-point lead for Clemson. The free throw makes it a two, and now an opportunity to add to that. Ernst Housen got his hand in there. Thomas with some crossovers. Big fella going to work, and he got the bounce. And Elijah Thomas determined on that possession he was going to get a bucket. Gentry just hit from deep, a possession to go. Got the mismatch, the drive, missed. This is Reed with a game-high 19. And that was a six-point possession for Clemson, the last trip down the floor. And we're talking about a game where it's gone in a 20-point swing where it was just right State had a six-point lead. So this game has turned around quickly in favor of the home team. And that was three-pointer. Technical free throw, and then another basket. And now a couple Coach shots Nagy, offline. Yeah, Coach Nagy not happy with that last shot. And I believe that was from Potter trying to get his team to calm down. Doesn't want Clemson to get any separation at this point, especially on their home floor. But another offensive board for Elijah Thomas, who will try to go back to work. He's fouled. So with Loud and Love about to check in, it's Ernst Housen. He's been the one guarding Thomas, picks up the foul. You've been watching that all game. Coach Nagy has typically not put Love on Thomas. It's been Ernst Housen down there. Well, and I think that is to keep Love out of foul trouble. But Thomas is going to have an advantage just from a strength standpoint versus Ernst Housen. But I'm not sure that would be the case with Love guarding him. But Love's so valuable to keep on the floor. Now with those three fouls, he's going to come back into the game and most likely will be guarding Thomas. You know, Brad Brownell going to the zone earlier to try to preserve Thomas and keep him on the floor. But he will come out after this free throw. Trey, Trey Jimerson is going to get back into the game for Thomas if he's able to make this free throw. And normally at times you'll see somebody that scores table for you. You'll give away that point. <laughs> Missed the free throw on purpose to stay on the court. Clemson is 5 of 11 for the strike. 
Love with another offensive rebound. He's one of the best in the nation, and it's a three-point game. Well, and the reason why is because he's so strong and so big. I mean, you barely see two people push Elijah Thomas under the basket, but that's exactly what happened. But it was legal. It wasn't though he did it le legally. He basically got great position and was able to root Thomas out to pick up the spot. Here's round two. Thomas. He finds some space. Well, we talked about both these bigs getting back involved in the game in the second half, and the coaching staffs have done a great job of getting both of them involved and getting them touches here. And we've had a nice little big man battle, which is rare in college basketball nowadays. 15 points for Thomas, two better than his average of 13 a game. And he blocked the shot. Wampler got it back and fouled. And so remember, that is the first team foul on Clemson. We reset the fouls at the 10 minute mark of the NIT. Well, and what that does, of course, this will be a shooting foul, but what people don't or may not be getting from the fact that the fouls reset at the 10 minute mark, it takes it much longer to get to the bonus. But now with this resetting for the last time, once we get under five minutes, I believe it is, at the end of the half, the second foul will immediately go to the bonus. I'm sorry, under two minutes instead of five minutes. The last um, the last two minutes, if they're not at five fouls, the second foul will become the bonus instead of it going. But there will be no one and one in the NIT, which it will be rare for college basketball and something I'm sure many fans will have to get used to. And this model is the way it's administered at the NBA level. Exactly. But it resets at the quarter. So every 12 minutes, the fouls reset at the quarter, which would have made much more sense for the experiment to have quarters involved with resetting the foul. Let's just have the halves. <laughs> Outside of that, I do really like the rules that the NIT is experimenting with. And I think this is the time to do it. The NIT is very important, but it also gives you live action opportunities to be able to experiment with these rules to see what works, what doesn't, and then to really be able to survey the coaches and see what should be, because this is a rule change year in college basketball. And so a number of these rules could be actually instituted. You thought we weren't going to deal with fractions tonight, huh? <laughs> You're always dealing with fractions. <laughs> There's Scott Nagy. He spent 21 years at South Dakota State. He guided that program through its Division II to Division I transition. He won there. He comes to Wright State. He wins here. Love, great position. Now One point game. And that's a mismatch. And I love Amir Sims, but he is not big enough, strong enough to defend Love on the block. Amir Sims is a really more of a stretch four. So he's at a disadvantage down there trying to guard Love in that spot. Winner faces Furman or Wichita State. And that'll be in the coming days. You see a great feed from Ersthausen to find Love, who buries Amir Sims on the block inside the painted area, and not much Sims can do at that point. Sims just got bodied there. Scara, he's hit a few triples, misses from 15. And right State, it's had a couple four-point leads. It's Every time it's tried to pull away, Clemson has come right back. And they try to retake the lead again. Less than eight to play. Sims on Love again. And Wright State going to continue to give Love opportunities. Unable to finish on that jump hook, but I still like that shot from him. And getting the ball inside to the big fella. Just his second miss. Love, seven of nine from the field, 14 points. Reed. Scar it down to Sims. Got to shoot it. The shot clock did not reset. Ball never hit the rim. And it's Wright State basketball. Clemson. And Wright State battling inside a little job this evening. One point game.
Catch every moment of the 2019 National Invitation Tournament on the ESPN family of networks. Also visit NCAA.com. It's your home for all 90 NCAA championships. And not a bad showing inside Little John Coliseum. Clemson found out Sunday evening. It officially did not receive a bid into the NCAA tournament. Now, nonetheless, the third straight postseason appearance for the Tigers. And they've got a one-point advantage over a very strong Wright State team out of the Horizon League. This has been a competitive game from start to where we stand now. It really has. And you're talking about Clemson jumping out to a 14-point lead early and Wright State battling back on the road in this game and putting themselves in great position to come up with a win in the NIT. But loving the big man battle between Love and Thomas. Thomas getting the better of the matchup on that possession. And that's the advantage that Thomas has defensively. He's one of the best in all ACC defensive team member this year for the second straight season. The third block for Thomas. And there's a foul, though, on Newman. Second team foul on Clemson. The free throw line really has not been a major factor in today's game. Not too many fouls, not too many free throws taken. Look at Thomas and Love in the paint. Well, consider also that it's resetting every 10 minutes. Wampler rattles it home. And no one and one in this game. That's why the free throws haven't been much of an issue. But when they have had a Wright State 9 for 9 from the free throw line, Clemson 5 for 11. Wright State with a two point lead right now. And if Clemson doesn't win this game, that's one of the areas they have to look back at is the points they gave away at the free throw line. Scara for three, knocks it down. And if they do win this game, they'll definitely have to attribute a lot of that to the three-point shooting, which, as you mentioned earlier, has been sporadic for the Tigers all season long. David Scara now knocking down his fourth three-pointer on the evening. 16 points, one off his season high. Wampler. Out to Gentry. And the rebound is Scara. And Clemson fortunate right there. Scar instead of grabbing the rebound, tips it back out to Gentry, who we know is a capable three-point shooter. Gentry just unable to knock down a wide-open look. Loser goes home. The winner advances to the second round. And the winner faces either Furman or Wichita State. Now that three ways short. Now Wright State can take a lead. Four ties, eight lead changes in this game. Hughes misses everything. And Ernsthausen may have saved it. He did. A hustle play by the senior. And Ernsthausen does a great job of locating a Clemson defender, Clyde Trapp, throwing it off of Ernsthausen before he, I'm sorry, off the trap before he hits the ground. Maintaining possession for Wright State, who tried to take a lead once again on this possession in a one-point game. So remember, the first round of the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship begins Friday. The top seed Louisville Cardinals faces Robert Morris on new at uh, noon, parted on Friday, second straight year. Cardinals have earned a number one seed. I got some news, some very interesting news that I did not think that I would ever hear, at least in the next 10 to 15 years of women's college basketball. Connecticut is a two seed? That is surprising. Shocking. That, that is definitely shocking. UConn is a two seed. I don't think that you ever needed to motivate Gino Ariema anymore in his team, but you just did. Thomas, the senior from Dallas, past love. He might have got a piece of that. Gentry on the move. Thomas went looking for contact instead of just trying to finish the shot. And in doing so, misses it. 
And now Clemson gives up the three. And the lead to Wright State, who goes ahead by two off the Cole Gentry look. His third triple. And Gentry, who had 15 points in the Horizon League Championship game, one of the very few players to shoot the ball well. And I can tell you right now, Marquise Reed sold that one. <laughs> that is a, we talked about how clever he was. And I'm not saying that he didn't get hit on that three-point attempt. But he definitely sold that to come away with three free throws. And Potter not happy at all about the fact that he was called for that foul. Reed had missed his first two. Now trying to go three for three from the stripe this time. And if Reed connects, this would give us the 10th lead change of the evening. 22 for Reed. And that's the Marquise Reed that we've grown to know and become accustomed to going to the free throw line and making all of his free throws. Not the Marquise Reed we saw miss back to back in the first half. Love fighting with Thomas. Left hand. And Scara secures the rebound. Marquise Reed fouled. One point game with 334 left. Loser goes home. Winner moves to the second round. Clemson finds itself in a one one possession game late in the first round of the NIT. How many times have we seen this this season for the Tigers? Lost at the horn against NC State in January. Jordan Wara comes out of nowhere to block the shot in the waiting moments of this game against Louisville on February 16th. And then against the ranked North Carolina Tar Heels, another two-point loss. Corey Clemson lost 10 games to ACC opponents, five of them by two points or fewer. And you get an opportunity to see those near misses. Also a buzzer beater at Miami where they lost on a Zach Johnson shot at the buzzer. And then you go back to the, NC, to the ACC tournament just last week where they lost to NC State. Once again, a game where they had the lead coming down the last possession. And then Markel Johnson gets fouled going to the basket, goes to the free throw line to make two game winning free throws. So that's just been the type of year it's been for the Clemson Tigers is playing close games and the inability to be able to close them out. And they also had a 14, I'm sorry, 18 point lead in that game against NC State. 14 point lead in this one. But they get a little bit more separation with Clyde Trapp knocking down the three. So it's a four point lead. You mentioned Forrest Gump earlier. Is this going to be Groundhog Day again for Clemson? It's now got the four point lead. Three in the air. And it's a miss. Mark Hughes can't convert. Gentry, two-point game. Trap. That rattles down. And five straight points for Trap in the starting lineup for Shelton Mitchell and making big plays down the stretch. And Brad Brownell also learning who are the guys that he can depend upon and build upon next year? Clyde Trapp stepping up to be one of those guys. Mark Hughes is a senior, so he won't be in the mix for Wright State next year, and he's trying to extend his career right now. Ten triples for the Raiders tonight. Scara, he has four three-pointers. Timeout taken by Brad Brownell. He has two remaining, so does Scott Nagy. And we're five seconds away, remember, from hitting that threshold, meaning every foul under the two minute mark the rest of the way warrants two free throws. So remember, after us, we've got Loyola, Chicago, and Creighton later tonight, Sports Center tonight. After that South Dakota State and Texas NIT matchup, it's with Bucci and Levy. So 
How about the $430 million man, Mike Trout? The, the guys will take a look at the contract, the NCAA tournaments, uh, and highlights in reaction from the two first four games earlier tonight. Duke on upset alert. Did you buy that one? No, not buying it at all. <laughs> You're less buying it at all, but I tell you what I am buying. Mike Trout, 12 years, $430 million. And it seems as though the Angels were just waiting to see how much money Bryce Harper was going to get so they could blow that out of the water just like Marquise Reed just blew by the entire Wright State defense for an easy layup. Marquise Reed now with a game-high 24. It's a nice drive. I'll tell you, Gentry has turned it up a notch in the second half. And the smart play by Gentry there, recognizing that Clemson is switching on the screen of rolls, and he's got an advantage and just easily took Amir Sims right to the basket. That layup just as easy as the one was Reed on the previous possession. This game has been played within four or five points. Either way, all second half. Thomas, he's fouled. And a great foul by Wampler coming over. Love gambled for the steal. In a tough situation, and right there, Clyde Trapp does a great job feeding the post and throwing it only to where his recipient can get the basketball. Wampler coming up with a big foul right there, and that's crucial, making Thomas go to the free throw line and earn it in comparison to giving up the easy dunk. Now he's four of seven. But even if he misses this free throw, if you just get one, then it was a great foul. Otherwise, it's basically the same as the dunk would have been. But he still has to earn him. It's much more difficult doing this than it was for him just to put down the easy dunk. He makes a pay. Five ties, ten lead changes. A terrific first round NIT matchup. Clemson trying to avoid another one and done. And lost in the first round two years ago. Gentry. Follows the miss. And that's the one guy that should not get the offensive rebound. But remember, the, clock, the shot clock resets to 20 seconds, not to 30. So only 12 seconds remaining on the shot clock as Coach, Coach Nagy calls the timeout right there and recognizing, and I'm not sure if anyone for Wright State recognized that they only have 12 seconds left on the shot clock because, of course, this rule is new for the NIT, which means it's new for all of these players having to get used to it as well. So, yes, after an offensive rebound, like you said, shot clock doesn't go to 30. It only goes to 20. One of the many experimental rules that will be administered during this National Invitation Tournament. And that also includes pushing the three-point line back 20 inches. The lane has been widened by four feet. That aligns with the NBA measurement. And then, of course, at the 10-minute mark of each half, no quarters, but at that 10-minute mark, the free throws, or pardon me, the fouls are wiped out. Goes back to zero for each team. It's worth pointing out right now, though, each foul the rest of the way gives each team two free throws. The winner tonight faces Furman or Wichita State in the second round. That game is tomorrow. The second round game will fall between March 21st and March 25th. And for the Clemson Tigers, if you feel as though you were snubbed by the NCAA, and you should have been in the tournament, which I thought they should have been. It is paramount that you win here on your home court this evening. Otherwise, that argument is new. Ernst Townsend, way off. Love has two free throws. He's fouled, and it might have been on Thomas. I believe that was on Thomas, and really, Thomas just in a bad situation, picking up his fourth foul there. I don't believe anyone was expecting Ernsthausen's three-pointer to not hit the rim and come off on the other side to love. And Thomas just in a bad position right there, just pretty much walks into a foul.
Brad Brownell going to try to conserve Elijah Thomas. On the offensive end of the floor with those four fouls, not put him in position to where he could get an offensive foul. And you put in a better free throw shooter. And more of a matchup problem in Amir Sims for Love to guard him on the perimeter right now. Sims going to float outside. Most likely won't clog up the paint to try to give Marquise Reed as much room to operate in the painted area as he can bringing down to these last 10 seconds on the shot clock. The All-ACC selection with a game-high 24. Tough shot. Love bats it around with 17.6. Wright State has to foul. And then tell you right now, it's 6'9", 280. With Love coming over and fouling as Reed gets to the rim and is unable to finish. Love comes over and fouls John Newman, and Newman feels that one. That's not a that's not a light foul, and I believe the officials are actually going to go take a look at that to make sure there's no extracurricular there. We'll just call that a love tap. Your puns have been on point. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I was wondering if you got it. I might have been the first one, though, tonight. <laughs> <laughs> As you see, the offensive rebound by John Newman and then Loudon Love coming out. And it was a play on the basketball. You know, but when you stand over the top, maybe the officials take exception to that. But he comes out. It's a hard. Oh, well, now from that angle, there is contact above the shoulders to the face of John Newman on the last replay we got a chance to see. So I'm sure that's what the officials are actually looking at to see if that's going to be a flagrant foul. Because as you come across and you see the right hand of Love immediately come across the front of the face of John Newman. And now we saw a six-point possession earlier on a flagrant foul hook and hold on Potter. And now, they very well could come away from this with it, but they're just going to call the common foul, which I have no problem with. He was making a play on the basketball, so I have no problem with that love tap. I can't believe it took you so long to get that one the first time. Would you rather have 6'9", 280-pound loud lover Zion Williamson coming at you for that foul? Um, it's basically a trick question. Okay. I'm gonna go, but I'm gonna go with Zion because that's a huge miss, by the that, way. That is a huge miss, but Zion is much more nimble, which gives him the opportunity to avoid that foul a little bit. Love is like a a freight train; you can't stop him once he gets going. Two possession game now, 17.6. Wright State with one timeout. Gentry's gotta go. Walker. With eight seconds, Love got a hand on it. Ball's still free. Clemson comes away with it. There's the foul with 1.5. And the Tigers can put it on ice and advance to the second round. And Clemson coming up with a stop when they need it. Love has fouled out after playing an excellent second half. But Clemson coming up when they, when they stop when they needed it most. And more importantly, winning a close basketball game. The toughest game to win in the NIT is the first one. After the first one, you get back to playing basketball. There's so many emotions involved with the fact that you were disappointed by not being in the NCAA tournament and give Wright State a tremendous amount of credit for coming on the road and having a great performance here at Clemson showing that they are a very worthy adversary here and of course on Tobacco Road and in the ACC but Clemson going to come away with a win here and hopefully they get Shelton Mitchell back in the fold and have an opportunity to make a run in the NIT championship. This has been a fantastic game. Ten lead changes, five ties. It's Clemson that comes away with a win. Tigers advance to the second round. Two days ago, wasn't the brightest of days around here. The Tigers left out of the NCAA tournament field, but 
like it did five years ago. Clemson with the win. It tries to march towards New York City, where it made an NIT run five years ago. And so now it faces either Furman or Wichita State. That game tomorrow in the second round. And Clemson, of course, would host. That's going to fall between March 21st and 25th. And when you look at it, Furman, a very good year right up the street in, I believe, Greenville, South Carolina. So you're talking about two schools not separated by much, but I can tell you right now, Greg Marshall and his group definitely going to have something to say about that, traveling cross-country to come back and play. Of course, Greg Marshall, tremendous ties in the state of South Carolina, coaching at Winthrop and also at the College of Charleston. <laughs> So somewhat of a homecoming for Greg Marshall, Marshall and Wichita State. How good was Marquise Reed today? Marquise Reed was better than good today. And, of course, without Shelton Mitchell handling so much more responsibility, ball handling, and also his ability to make plays for his teammates and for himself, getting to the rim, shooting the mid-range pull-up, shooting through knocking down the threes, but really just keeping Wright State off balance. There was no answer for Marquise Reed. The big bucket in crunch time, getting to the rim and able to finish, and coming up, of course, huge without his backcourt partner in this one. Reed, one of four Tigers that finished in double figures, and Clemson moves on to the second round. will face either Furman or Wichita State, the winner of that game from March 21st to the 25th. For Corey Alexander, our entire great crew, Kevin Fitzgerald, thanking you so long.